Welcome to another video from Gui Lao 60. Why can't the West beat China economically? Well, I'm going to tell you, you know me. Well, see, China runs its government like it runs a company. And everybody knows that if you've got a Chinese company that moves into your area of wherever you are around the world, you better step up your game because they are going to bury you. Uh, I know this because I've got personal experience with it. When I left my boss's employment in Prince Albert, Saskatchewan, 10 months after I met Wei Feng because she said, why are you making this guy money when you could be making money for yourself? I said to myself, hmm, okay, let's give this a try. And he knew as much about the business as I did. So it was a 50-50 split. But what he didn't know is I had an ace in my hand and that ace was Wei Feng because she thought outside the box. She dealt with business differently. She knew what competition, very strict competition was and that gave me a leg up. So really the other company had no chance, not even a little chance to compete with us. You gotta love these little places that I find to make videos in. This is an older area of the train station, but I picked this place particularly because of all of the trees today. It's 36 freaking degrees outside, 80% humidity. If I was to try to do this out in an area where it was sunny outside, I'd probably roast my ass off. So anyway, I hope uh, the, the color and everything is, is good in the shade because I'm using an FDRX 3000 Sony and they're usually not very good in low light. But anyway, that's not what this story is about. Let's go, ba let's go back to the main topic of this uh, of, of this video. Competing with China economically, the Western world just can't do it. Um, China has built their country like they would a company. You've got places like Ningbo, uh, you've got places uh, that Ningbo as a shipping area, uh, transiting products outside out of China. Uh, you've got uh, uh, you know, Beihai, Fenchengong, same thing. You've got Hainan Island now, a free trade zone. The biggest free trade zone, pilot free trade zone, mind you, in all of China. You've got free trade zones along the Vietnamese border. You've got areas that are designed specifically for bringing stuff into China, building stuff and, and sending stuff out. You've got financial sectors of, of your business. Hong Kong being one. You've got your uh, your high-tech area, Shenzhen. You know what I mean? You've got your tourist area, Guangxi Autonomous Region. Uh, you know, you've got all of these little areas of your business, and it's a large business, it's a, it's a, it's a great business, but it doesn't stop there, guys. How did this all happen? How did, how did, how did this big company called China actually happen? Well, you've got the politicians are the CEOs of the business. And all of these CEOs or politicians have years, decades of experience. They started at the bottom of the company and worked their way up. They didn't just say, oh, I'm a popular guy. I'm a, um, a part-time drama teacher, but my dad used to be really smart and uh, was a, well, that's debatable too, and, and was a politician. So I'll just ride on his name. And now I run a country like Canada. Yeah, I'm talking about uh, uh, Xiao Tudou, uh, little potato. But you see, the thing is that all of the politicians, all of the CEOs in China have the experience to run a country, a company like China. Okay, now you, now you need the people to plan uh, all of the things that have to go on in that company. Well, who better to plan things other than engineers, accountants, people that have actually gone to university to do exactly what they're supposed to do in that corporation. You can't get, as I say, a part-time drama teacher or an advertising agent to run your, your financials. You can't get, uh, I don't know, you look, at, you, you look at politics in the Western world and uh, if you've got a name, if you were, say, Arnold Schwarzenegger, I'm sorry Arnold, but it's the truth, just because 
you can act doesn't mean you can run a state. Uh, if you uh, have radical ideas that appeal to a certain number of people in your constituency, now you can be a politician, you can be an MP, you can be a congressman, you can be... In China it's not like that, guys. If you haven't put in your time, if you don't know how to do your job, you are not doing that job because if you don't do that job properly, bingo, bango, bongo, you're out of there. And then China actually has plans. They design plans that are five years in length. But those five-year plans go to the master plan that's been going on for, well, since, since the 70s type thing. And it's all moving in the same direction. In the West, you get Trump in, he's got a direction. Trump leaves, Biden gets in. He goes a different direction. You get the conservatives in Canada going one direction, and you got the, the liberals going another direction. Just depends on who gets in. Biden, first thing he did was just eliminate everything that Trump ever did. What did Trump do? Because it was Obama before him? Oh, he, yeah, he just, he, he eliminated his ass right away in everything. So you can't go forward by going backwards. And you see, China understands that. So when they pick these directions, um, they're long-term directions. They want to make things better, not only today, not only tomorrow, but 20, 30, 50 years down the road. How the hell are you gonna compete with that? And just like any company, country, around the world, anywhere in the world, if you don't take care of your employees, your employees are not going to be able to take care of you. If all your employees, or if a certain percentage, say hundreds of thousands of your employees are homeless, uh, they're not going to be looking out for your best interest because you're not looking out for their best interest. Makes sense? If millions of your employees are hooked on drugs, well, they're not really going to be much good for you, are they? You know what I mean? So if, if people don't have confidence in the people running their country, company, uh, then they won't work for you. Uh, they'll quit. How can you run a company country with a high percentage of those people on unemployment insurance, welfare, food stamps, not willing to work, handouts are easier, all of these things. In China, you don't get that because over 90% of the employees slash citizens of that company slash country are behind that country slash company. Now think about this one. If your country company is in debt up to its eyeballs, and has to borrow money for everything and you've got to pay interest rates on that borrowed money and you've got all your 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 people pissed off at you well, at least half of the people don't want to work for you because uh, they think the other boss would have been better than than you being the boss uh, not only that but uh, you've got to pay all of the interest on the loans uh, a lot of your 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 people are out sick because they're addicted to drugs uh, a lot of people can't come into work because they're homeless you've got no place to, to, to sleep live uh, wash their clothes you've got a whole bunch of people that just say fuck you I'm not gonna go to work because uh, I can get my unemployment and benefits or my welfare check my food stamps and that's better than the wage that you're gonna be paying me if I actually do go to work so how are you gonna compete with a with a country that uh, people actually want to work they want to work for the country company and uh, that's the bottom line guys so if you're not running your company country properly uh, you're gonna be in debt you're not gonna make a lot of money you're not you're not gonna be able to pay your employees properly uh, if your company country uh, has hyperinflation on housing if your company country has uh, uh, expectations of wages really high because uh, housing is so expensive because food um, transportation uh, all of those things that make your life what it is in your country company uh, then you need more money to survive what happens if they won't pay you that money so if your country company is is borrowing money all the time they can't make enough money to survive in the real world and uh, it's so far in debt, 
it's just like a company, guys. If a country can't make it, it doesn't. If a, if a company can't make it, it doesn't. So if you don't have the right leaders, calling the shots. If you don't have the right people setting the plans in motion, not only setting the plans, but actually making them happen. If you don't have that, um, how can you run your company country? You can't, that's just it. And uh, China knows that. So when they set up their country, they run it like a company. And everybody that's ever done business against a Chinese company or with a Chinese company knows that these people work harder, they work longer, they'll work for less. If something's not working in their, in their company, uh, restaurant, engineering company, uh, law office, to you freaking name it, because they're everywhere and doing everything around the world now. They will look at the people doing the same business as what they're doing, the successful businesses, and figure out what we're doing wrong and what they're doing right, and they will change their ways. In the Western world, it's not like that. If my company country isn't doing very well, well, it's their fault over there for stealing our stuff. It's their fault for competing with us. How dare these people do, you know what I mean? I guess, oh, wine, 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 wine. My God, it's embarrassing being from the West. And you know, I can walk down a street like this with a camera in my face in an older area of China. Nobody here speaks English and I never have a problem. This is a safe company country. Now we know every company and country has a PR, public relations department. And if your public relations department is always dictating to their customers what they should do, what they should buy, if they're always occupying their business space, if they're always sanctioning them and saying, well, we're not gonna sell to you, we're not gonna buy from you until you do exactly what we wanna do. You know where I'm going with this. If there is an alternative to dealing with that country company, then those people, those citizens of those other country companies that have been taken advantage of for such a long time will go over to those country companies to buy their products, to sell their products, to make partnerships around the world. And I think that's what you're seeing right now because between 1980 in 2020, the influence of a place like China has grown big time in certain areas of the world. And in that same time period, the United States of America's influence around the world has diminished. So you gotta understand why this is actually happening. Why has China grown and the United States shrunk? Check out these maps and uh, it sort of shows you the influence, a Chinese influence that used to be less than the United States and now is more than the United States. And it's growing. Between 1980 and 2020, guys, it has grown a lot. So I guess what it comes down to, if you're running your country company uh, improperly, if you're dictating, if you're occupying, if you're taking advantage of your customers, your partners around the world, if you're not doing it right, if you think you're better, if you think that you can occupy, if you think that you can be part of a coup in a country, overthrow governments or CEOs of that company and still have that company love you and respect you and want to do business with you, I don't think that that's gonna happen. And I think you're seeing that on a world stage right now. I think that um, competition, and it's been a while since the Western world has had competition, and I I think um, it's a good thing for the world. I think it's a great thing for Africa. Um, I think it's a great thing for Southeast Asia. It's, it's very good for China. I don't think it's very good for those colonial countries out there, the UK, Canada, United States, Australia, France, Italy, Germany, all of these places that have taken advantage of their position in the world over the last couple of centuries. So now that there's competition out there, you can see the ones that are losing power and influence around the world starting to panic. You're, you're watching the ones that are actually doing the hard work, the hard investment, the investment in the future, the education of their children, the education of, uh, of their population, making everything better from transportation to healthcare to you freaking name it, uh, better for the people. 
And uh, that country company is China. And I think in the future, you're going to see China keep growing. You're going to see the West diminish in influence around the world. And uh, they'll probably do more whining. But maybe that's just part of the process of losing power around the world through lack of understanding, through lack of um, being compassionate. Maybe that's the word. Compassionate to your neighbors. Compassionate to your citizens. If you've got people living on the streets, homeless people living on the streets in your cities, if you've got people that can't find jobs, if you've got millions of people addicted to drugs, if you've got people that just won't work, if you've got a society that's built like that, you've got problems. And there's just really no quick fix. In China, it's not like that. In China, there's no people living on the streets. There are homeless people, but very, very few. It's not like it is in the Western world. And you gotta understand, they got 1.4 billion people here. Okay, uh, you don't have drug addicts because the drug laws are, you got it, very, very strict. So uh, you don't have those two things. And if you have a social welfare system that people can take advantage of, uh, they will. And China doesn't have that social welfare system. So, of course, they do have social welfare, but not to that point. It all comes down to reality. It's not unicorn fart dust, guys. It all comes down to reality. If people are working in your company country, if people are getting a proper wage, if housing is a proper uh, cost, if your breakfast food is a proper cost, if healthcare is proper cost, if you can get transportation around your country company properly, if people are getting educated properly, if the world works properly in your country company, then you can compete on the world stage or in your city if you're a small restaurant, if you're a big corporation in your country and around the world, if you're a country, geopolitical around the world. But it all has to work for everybody in that country company from the CEO down to your laborers. And uh, I think that's what you're seeing in China. I think China has their, their finger on the pulse of what's going on, not only around the world, but in, in their country company in China here. Did I say country company enough during this video? Anyway, uh, that's another video. Oh, and I don't think the Western world has their finger on the pulse at this particular point in time. Did they in the past? I think so. Maybe back in the 40s and 50s, and I think maybe that's what Trump was saying. Uh, you know, the good old days, uh, make America great again. Uh, you know, all of these different things. Uh, does it take a business mogul to run a company country? No, I don't think so. I think it, what it takes is a lot of training, a lot of understanding, um, a lot of good people moving in the same direction. And uh, I think China's doing that and the West isn't. So anyway, that's another video from Guilao60. If you like this video, as always, like, comment, subscribe, push that share button. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to resubscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell. And whatever you do, don't forget to put a couple bucks in the children's Patreon account. It's for a good cause. Thanks for watching. Bye now.